of both LEMIAC and our partners, Consumers Energy, I'm happy to welcome you to our latest uh, Exploring Our Energy Future Forum, focused on visions of a smarter grid. We do these as a way to examine the underlying details, and we explore information on emerging technologies, best practices, and look at the negative and positive impacts that each of these technologies might have on our community, its citizens, and of course, our natural resources. I'd like to do some introductions now. Uh, first to my right, we have Patrick Hudson. He's the Smart Grid Section Manager of the Electric Reliability Division at the Michigan Public Service Commission. He has a master's degree in public administration from Western Michigan University. And in December of 2010, he began his current role. He administers the Michigan Public Service Commission Smart Grid Collaborative and works to engage any and all stakeholders read Smart Grid. Um, to his right is Ian Hiskins, the Venema Professor of Engineering at the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at the University of Michigan, hailing all the way from Ann Arbor, go blue. For 10 years, he has held appointments in the electricity supply industry and at various universities internationally in Australia and the United States. And last but certainly not least is Ms. Kristin Van Riesema. She is the project manager for Smart Streets at Consumers Energy. So um, let's just go online and start that out. What is the Smart Grid? It says the Smart Grid, a nickname for an ever widening palette of utility applications that enhance and automate the monitoring and control of electrical distribution. And it kind of says it briefly and digest, you know, it's a way you can digest it. And, and so to add to Nick's vision story, um, it was pretty much concentrated on the end user, which is us, and the convenience of all the things that we went through, which we can have through the day of the And then when you get to the home or the business, you know, it stops at the meter, but then it goes beyond the meter in terms of what actual things people are doing beyond the meter if they're choosing um, thermostat control, they're choosing smart appliances that can do the two-way communi communication. Um, so A to B and then beyond the meter, with all the consumer behavior stuff. So if you add to his vision that, that uh, if you could visualize starting here and going there, smart grid improvements in a digital technology could address many things along that line. You hear so much about smart meters, that's only one part of it, and that smart meter is actually, you know, the monitoring device at a home or a business. Um, but I like to think of it as that whole world of the kind of improvements that can take place. So for me, um, what I see in looking across mainly technical literature, which is what I spend my time looking at, the smart grid is whatever you want it to be. Um, it, everyone who writes a paper these days, a technical paper these days, calls whatever they used to do exactly the same, but they put the word smart in front of it. Um, so, so I'm a, I'm a cynic, um, but that's very much what's happening. Um, I give, you know, the current paradigm for how power systems operate is that loads do whatever loads do. And generation and transmission have to be sized to be able to track the loads. Um, and, and, and so I, I turn on a device um, at home, um, a generator somewhere has to respond to that. If you, if you ever see anything that I write that uses the term smart grid, I'll resign because I just refuse to use that term. But what I like to think of is the responsive grid where everybody is now participating with where all the different devices within the grid are responding in their own way to make the grid operate in a more effective way. And that's our challenge is being able to explain to our customers what their behavior does and make it easier so that they don't have to think about it. Because changing the power prices between day and night could be a significant change for a lot of people. We actually have to pay to generate. That's how cheap power is at night right now. And a lot of people don't understand that. How can we shift load to off-peak? so that we don't have to have generators sitting there for that one or eight, five days. Right now, we don't know when people are out. They have to actually call us, and everybody's very surprised by that, but that's the reality right now. So how can we provide technology so that 
we know you're out and we can get you back on as quickly as possible and be very efficient with that. And have that be very, very inexpensive and get off of using gasoline. I mean, you know, we have a lot of resources in the United States and we should be able to generate all of electricity with, and, and not have to import oil. For the for me, it's it's not just it's the it's the grid modernization, using technology to be as efficient as possible, and providing that that opportunity for folks to set it and forget it and not disrupt their lives, but 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 yet do it in such a way that they can really make a difference. Kristen, would you kind of describe what consumers' plans are and you know, what those advanced meters are and what that means for consumers? The idea was is to first give them some energy efficiency uh, measures, looking at their businesses, looking at their homes, how can they make their, their space as efficient as possible, and then putting the meters in, and then allowing them to see their energy use uh, on, a, on a daily basis, hourly basis, um, and what would they do with that information. And it was very interesting um, to find that what I meant, the, the set it, forget it kind of concept is that some people are zealots and just loved it. They were in that web portal all the time, and I'll tell you what, they really, they saved about 20% on their bills. 